All right, so for number six, we have that the graphs of y equals six minus x and y equals 1.5 x squared minus 2.5 x plus three intersect at 2.4, which is here, and negative 1.7, which is here. All right, cool. In diagram one, the region enclosed by the lines of y equals six minus x with x equals negative one, which would be here, Victor x equals negative 1, and x equals 2 has been shaded, see? And so for part A, we need to calculate the area of the shaded region in diagram 1. So let's take a moment, let's zoom in a little bit and see what we can do. Now, just by the look of it, okay, the entire shaded region right now could be divided into shapes, see? Whenever you're trying to find the area of a shaded region, especially a region that is not just one shape, the best tool I can give you is find a way to split up that big shape into a lot of shapes. Right, that's basically what I'm trying to say. And so what you can do here, actually, is that you go ahead and say, all right, well, I can have one square here, or a rectangle, we're not sure, and one triangle here. And so if you go ahead and find the area of this first guy, and the area of the second guy and add them together, you are good to go. So for the first guy, we are dealing with a triangle, see? Now, what are the dimensions of, of this triangle? Well, because we know that this right here is x equals negative one, that this is zero, and that this is x equals two, that means that the distance, see, from this entire part is going to be what? It's going to be three, see? If you're tripped up on that, go ahead and draw a number line. See, thought this is negative 1, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. What is the distance from here to here? You jump 1, 2, 3 times. See, the distance is 3. All right, cool. So right over here, it is 3. What about this distance here? Well, we can think about it the same way. So um, let's look at my y values. See, if here I have a y value of 7, that means over here I have 7. And here I have a y value of 4. That means this, this right here is 4. See? What is this distance over here? Which is the same distance as there. Well, 7 minus 4 is 3. So here is 3. All right, cool. So the height of my triangle is 3. So what is the area of a triangle? As you can see in your formula booklet, the area of a triangle is going to be base times height divided by 2. This is my base. This is my height divided by 2. So the area of my first guy is 9 divided by 2. All right, let's find the area of the second guy. See, So for the second guy, well, we can see that one of the sides is 3. Cierto? So I can already say that for a rectangle or a square, it's going to be base times height. See? So I, I can already say that one of the bases is 3. And now let's find the height, see? Well, um, this height here, ¿cierto? if this point here is 2, 2,4, ¿cierto? here I have a y value of 4, that means from here to here, it is 4 units, see? So 3 times 4 gives you 12. So if I go ahead and add both of them together, ¿cierto? I'm going to have 1, the area of the first, plus the area of the second, which means I have 9 over 2 plus 12, which if I convert it all into fractions, cierto, is going to be 9 over 2 plus 24 over 2, which gives you da, 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 33 divided by 2. We go ahead and check the, f the answer key over here. Blah, 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 blah. 16.5. 33 divided by 2 gives me 16.5. All right, cool. So that is for part A. See? Now, I'm not quite done yet. ¿cierto? I'm actually missing something. It's not just 16.5. It is 16.5 something squared. See? I would say centimeters squared, which is like the classic. But here, they actually don't give us units. See? So when they don't give you units, you just have to say units squared. Now, I know some of you are confused why on why it's squared, see? Whenever you have distance, all right, 
it's going to be units to the power of 1. Whenever you have area, it is going to be units to the power of 2. And whenever you have volume, it's going to be units to the power of 3. Okay? That is why it's to the power of 1, to the power of 2, to the power of 3. You usually don't see to the power of 1 because units to the power of 1, you just leave it as units. Okay? So if you were wondering, mister, why the hell don't I see 1? Well, it's because the 1 is like hidden. See, it's invisible. All right, whatever. Just a mini class on why it's squared, why it's not. All right, cool. So part A, 16.5 units squared. So that is for part A. Then for diagram 2, cierto? let me just make a little bit of space. Let me leave the 16.5 up here so that we don't forget it. Oops, 16.5 units squared. All right, so that is for part A. Now we can move on. Sorry about that. They tell us that in diagram 2, the region enclosed by the curve, blah, 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 and the lines, blah, and blah, have been shaded. Okay. Write down an integral. Oh, shit. Write down an integral for the area of the shaded region in diagram 2. All right. So before I jump into it, see, this is actually simpler than what you think. But I do think it's important for you to understand what the heck you're even doing. Okay. An integral. An integral is basically area under the curve. An integral helps you find the area under the curve. See? In fact, whenever you do, I don't know, like binomial uh, CDF or inventory nor or normal CDF, so you're on your calculator, all you're really doing is that when you give it an X value, see? You're asking like, all right, from here to here, what's the area? So notice, it is the area under the curve which gives you a probability for binomial and normal CDF. But at the end of the day, what the what binomial CDF and normal CDF are doing behind the scenes in general is that it's making an integral. See, it is finding the area under the curve in order to give you the answer. And so an integral, what it helps you do is find the area under the curve. So how the hell does the integral even work? Yeah. Um. How do you how do you even explain that, dude? Damn. So you've probably seen in class this symbol here, okay? So that is like the sim the symbol of an integral, okay? And you need to plug in a and you need to plug in b. See? Now let me just take a moment. All right. So when you write down the integral, see, you need to write the lower bound. B is going to be your upper bound. And then you need to put the function. And then you need to write dx, which is basically saying, like, I am doing the integral specifically for the variable x. See? So what is my lower bound here? Well, because the calculator thinks from left to right, that means your lower bound is here and your upper bound is here. Now, how do you tell that to your calculator? Well, this line here in red is at x equals negative 1. And this line here in red on the right side is x equals 2. So your lower bound is going to be negative 1. Your upper bound is going to be 2. What is my f of x? What is the function specifically that I'm doing the integral of? This guy here. 1.5 x squared minus 2.5 x plus 3. And then I need to put dx because I am doing the integral specifically for the variable x. So times dx. If you want to get really, really fancy, I would suggest you put parentheses here. See, just to keep it really clear that the dx is right outside. And yeah, that would be for part bi. See, and for calculating the area of this region, yes, you can do it by hand. But why the fuck would I show you how to do it by hand when you've got the graphing calculator the graphing calculator you can put this entire integral and it's going to solve it for you and it's going to be beautiful now how the hell do you do that at least for the ta84 which is the classic you go to alpha window hitting that f2 and here you bunch of ha you blah, blah, blah. here you have a bunch of special functions see here you can deal with absolute values here you can do with uh a summate a summer sorry i don't know how to say it in english actually whatever, like a big something, here you have derivatives, and here you have integral. Here on the bottom you have log base, see? 
Today we're going to be working with the integral, the fourth one. So you go ahead and press it, and boom! You can notice that it's asking for the same four things that I mentioned earlier. The lower bound, the upper bound, your function, and which in respect to which variable. See? So my lower bound is negative 1, my upper bound is 2, my function is 1.5x squared minus 2.5x plus 3. And d of what? d of x. I'm doing the integral in respect to x. Go ahead and press enter. Boom, it solves it for you. So the area that is here, the area under the curve, okay, is going to be 9.75. Now 9.75 what? 9.75 units squared. That is for part B double I. And now for part C, we need to determine the area enclosed between both functions. Enclosed between. All right, so I know this is a math class and not a language class, but when it says enclosed between, it is literally like what is in the middle of both things, see? And so I am doing it between this guy and this guy. So what is between brown and light green? We have pink. So part C is asking for that. What is the area of the thing in pink? What is the area that is enclosed between both functions? All right, cool. So I found in part A cierto, that the area of the entire thing, which I'm going to now put in, eh, I'm going to put it in red, see? The area of the entire thing, right? The area of the entire thing is 16.5. So what I can do is that I take the area of the entire thing, right? I subtract it to the area that I have in, in, in black, ¿cierto? Which is, it looks something like that, ¿cierto? So this minus this is going to give you the area of what is just in pink. All right, that is like the sort of idea we're going for, okay? And so let's go ahead and plug in, right? We have 16.5 for red minus 9.75 for black equals what we have in pink. And so 16.5 minus this 9.75 gives you 6.75. So 6.75 what? 6.75 units squared. So that is for part C, and that is actually for number 6.